Okay, guys. Lesson 3.2 is exponential modeling. So we talked about the exponential function yesterday, right? Um, here, we're, when we talk about exponential modeling, this is more your population models, um, where you see these exponential models. Um, to me, this is more, this lends itself more to a science lesson because we also talk, like, there's an example about the growth of bacteria, half-life of radioactive substances, so definitely some science-y type stuff. Um, up at the top here, exponential population model. And specifically, they call it a population model. In general, it can work for any type of exponential situation where something is growing exponentially. Um, if a population P is changing at a constant percentage rate R each year, then P of T equals P naught times 1 plus R raised to the power of T. Notice where R stands for the percentage rate. What form, when we have a percentage rate, what form do we always use when we put it into equations? A decimal, yes? If something is 5%, you don't put 5 in the equation. You change it to a decimal, right? So just a friendly reminder there. P naught is the initial population. So that's P of 0. Are you guys okay with me calling it P naught? I don't know. P initial is what you guys are used to? Okay. And I, I hear P initial, P of 0, P naught. It's the initial population, okay? The population at time, zero, okay? B, that's just a way to represent it. No, it's not P to the zero, it's P not, it's P at time zero. Okay. I already mentioned that R is expressed as a decimal, and T, as always, is time specifically in years. So if you're dealing with something not in years, you have to do some conversions, right? Now, if R is greater than zero, so when R is your decimal form, if R is greater than zero, then we are talking about a situation of exponential growth. Okay, and in that case, 1 plus R, which is what is in the parentheses, is what you would use to find the growth factor. Okay, in just the same bit, if R is less than 0, so basically when I say R greater than 0, I'm saying over 100%. R less than 0, under 100%. Okay, this is exponential decay. 1 plus R is still important factor except we call it the decay factor in this case. Okay. Example one here. Tell whether the population model is an exponential growth function or exponential decay function and find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay. So in example A, it's P of T equals 782,248 times 1.0135 raised to the T power. Thoughts on what this is? What are we saying? Okay, it's growth because like right here, 1.0135 because this value is bigger than 1. That helps me to indicate that this is growth. Um, if we think about, you know, we had that population model up top. And if we try and rewrite this in terms of the population model, this is the 782,248. 1.0135, how does that break up with the 1 plus R? That would be 1 plus what? 
Yeah. Okay. So this could also be rewritten. And what I'm trying to do is get into this population model up here. This could be rewritten, breaking that 1.0135 up into 1 plus 0 0.0135. Right there is another indication that this is growth because it's growth because it's 1 plus that percentage. If it was decay, it would end up being 1 minus a percentage. This is growth because it's 1 plus the percentage. Now, the directions asked, is it growth or decay? And we've already agreed on growth. What is the constant percentage rate of growth or decay? So they're not asking for the growth factor. My growth factor would be that 1.0135. They're asking for the percentage rate. What would be my percentage rate here? What do you think? The 0.0135. Okay. The 0 0.0135, except we need to express it as a percent. So if we're taking 0 0.0135 and turning it out of decimal form to a percent, you guys know you move your decimal spot two places, right? Or it's multiplying by 100, however you want to think about it. I tend to move my decimal. I know some people like to just multiply by 100. So this is 1.35%. And that is your growth percentage rate. Very, very what? Very new. It's not like anything we've really done math. I would think you've seen bits and pieces of it in various science classes, yeah, though. So. Well, the whole thing is, uh, <coughs> I've Yeah, and honestly, this leads us into, you guys have done interest, like interest on bank accounts and that kind of thing, and you've seen that throughout various math, math classes, and this leads itself into the same thing. So, okay, B, P of T, what is that, 1,203,368 times 0.9858 raised to the T. What are your thoughts here? Has to be what? Decay. How can I tell decay without doing anything? Yeah, this value right here, 0.9858, is less than 1. So I haven't done anything with this problem, but that's one way that I know this is going to be a decay problem. Now, we still have to figure out what that percentage rate is. So like I did on the last problem, I'm going to rewrite this. 1,203,368. And remember, it's always one. Officially, they'll always say one plus. But keep in mind, it could be plus a positive number or plus a negative. So one something raised to the T. Am I going to add something or subtract something from one to get it? Okay. So right there, because I have to do 1 minus something, there's the other way that I know this is a decay problem. Okay, so now, what is that number that needs to go in that blank right there? What do you think, Levi? It's going to have to be whatever you can add up to that divided by the point. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's yeah, okay, so whatever... You add to 0.9858 that gets you 1, yes? How can I find that value? Can you do 1 minus 0.9858? And that will get you the number we need? What is the number I need? Okay. 0 0.0142. And what is that 0 0.0142? Okay, that's going to be my R. And that's going to be 1.42%, yes? As you move your decimal two places, right? 1.42. So this problem is decay. 
with a decay rate of 1.42%. Okay, you have to watch if they ask you for the percent the percentage rate, they want you to separate that and get the percentage rate. If they ask you for the growth or decay factor, they would have wanted like the decay factor would be 0.9858. They want that number with the one mixed in. Okay, moving on. Stop me if I get going too fast. Next example says determine the exponential function with initial value 12 increasing at a rate of 8% per year. Okay. Were we given an equation to use? Were we given an equation today to use? We had a, up at the top, a exponential population model, right? And keep in mind, they say it's for population, but it's exponential growth. Okay, you can use it for any type of exponential. And right here it says exponential, doesn't it? Okay, so we're going to be using, and I'm just going to leave it as P. P of T equals P naught times 1 plus R to the T. Okay, what do we know? Okay, initial value, what I'm calling P naught, what you guys are in your brains calling P initial, it sounds like. Okay. However you want to think about it, that 12 is going in for that P of zero there. What else do we know? Okay. Okay, so they give us a rate of 8%. When we put that 8% in for R, we're not putting in 8, we're putting it in as a decimal, 0 0.08. And I heard another comment over there that increasing. Increasing says we're going to add. If it was decreasing, we would subtract. Since it's increasing, is this growth or decay? This is a growth problem. And we know that just because it says increasing. Okay, let's fill this in. P of T, P naught, or P initial, which is 12, 1 plus R, which is 0 0.08, raised to the T. Because now, did they ask us to find anything? No, they asked us for the exponential function there. What's the one cleanup step I can take? Yeah. Keep the 12, add 1 and the 0 .08 and get 1.08 raised to the T. The one above it? The one above it's equivalent, it's just not cleaned up. Now, one thing I will say, I have written in my notes, we just used P of T for that. They didn't say it was population, so the other option is we could have expressed this with F of X instead, which would have been fine. If we express this with F of X, keep in mind that that exponent of T would actually be written as an X. So, yeah, so you could say F of X is 12 times 1.08 to the X. I'll be honest, I'm pretty flexible here, okay? I'm really not going to be too picky about the variables you use as long as you get the setup right, okay? And you could also, instead of saying f of x, you could say y equals. That would work as well. Okay, are we good there? Okay. I'm trying to keep myself moving because I want to make sure I have time to talk about these bottom two because they're the ones that are going to take me a little bit more time to explain, I think. First of all, notice it says solving exponential functions, and it says graphically, although there's a little bit I'll do graphically, but a lot of this is more thinking through it here. To get, I guess my focus on this one is more let's write the equation 
and then we'll talk graphically here. So, okay, so suppose a culture of 100 bacteria is put into a petri dish and the culture doubles every hour. Predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. Now, officially it says to solve graphically, yes? Well, in order to solve graphically, what do you need? Yeah, we need, we need an equation to plug in, right? And we don't have an equation. And so that's where I said to me more of the focus on this problem is, okay, let's work on an equation. Now, we can kind of use the idea of the exponential model up above, but I also want you, you know, to kind of explain it to you. So tell me, at one hour, what do you know about this Petri dish? It's what? It's going to double. So it started with 100 bacteria in there. So after one hour, there's how many? 200, right? Okay. So. <laughs> Done it in math class or science class? It's very possible. Okay. So after one hour, now we know it's at 200. I'm going to, because I'm trying to lead you somewhere, I'm not going to just write 200. It's 100 times 2, yes? And as I said, I'm trying to lead you somewhere, so you're going to have to bear with me, which is 100 times 2 to the first, which, yes, is the 200, right? Okay. Yep. What about after two hours? Okay, so ultimate thing we know, it's 400. How do we get that 400? You multiply 200 by 2, or you took the original 100 times 2 and what? Multiply it by another 2, which the point I'm going for is 100 times 2 to the second. I think you guys are getting there. Let me go one more hour. So what about after three hours? Okay. Everyone can get that final number of 800, yes? How do we actually get that 800? Yeah, I mean, it's 400 times 2, or... My 400 was 100 times 2 times 2, and then what? times another two, which is 100 times two to the third. Okay, so you see where I went with this, right? The idea that my equation, if you would, P of T is 100 times two to the T. Okay. That's the equation that I needed it to know. Now, ways to think about this. First of all, what does that base of 2 represent? Well, that base of 2 represents that this problem is doubling. If you think back up to 1 plus R, when something doubles, you're adding what percentage? You're adding 100%. And 1 plus 1 is... 2. So thus my 2, rep that 2 is representing doubling. <laughs> okay. Um, it took me a moment to figure out what you were saying there. Now, officially it says we want to know when the bacteria will be 350,000. So I want to know when this equation will equal 350,000. Okay, and we're going to do this graphically. So you're going to grab your calculator, and what are you going to have to graph? Three okay, 
So one thing we're going to graph is, and notice it's graph on the calculator. We're not graphing this by hand. It's P of T equals 100 times 2 to the T. That's the same thing as saying Y equals 100 times 2 to the X, correct? Yes, and you could say F of X equals. Now, what's the other? If we're looking for when it equals 30, 350,000, one option is you can try and like trace that and figure it out, right? But that's a lot of tracing. So we are looking, if we want to know when this is 35,000 or 350,000, we're looking for when that Y value is 350,000. So the shortcut here is to also graph the equation Y equals 350,000, which is just going to be a straight line, but it'll give us a way to find its intersection point. Okay. So go ahead and work on getting those on your calculator. The idea is you're going to have this exponential function, and you're going to have this horizontal line. Your goal is to find where they intersect. Do we have a way to do an intersection on a calculator? Well, you know, there's second calc zero. There's second calc min and max. What else is in that menu? Intersect. Have we used that yet? No. Okay. Okay, so grab the calculator. I am graphing 100 times 2 to the x. FYI, that is not 200 to the X. That doesn't work. And I am graphing 350,000. Now, if I just look at a traditional screen, am I going to see my intersection point at 350,000? Absolutely not. Zooming out, isn't going to do anything for you because it's going to be zoomed out so far you can't tell anything. Okay, let's change our window settings. We need our Y max to go up to above 350,000, right? So 350,000, I'm going to say 100. Just so I have something above 350,000. Now, do I need to keep my Y min all the way at negative 10? No, not really. Um, I don't know what's a good one to say. 340,000 might be a little bit too low. I don't know. Let me see what this does. Actually, I forgot. We have to change our X values here. <laughs> oh, yuck. I don't like what I just did there. My 350,000 graph all the way at the very top of my screen. I don't like that. Okay. Um, but notice, did I even see my exponential graph on here? No. So my guess is my X only goes from negative 10 to 10. So then logical assumption would be my X values need to get bigger. Because we don't even need negatives. I don't know why I left negatives on there. My brain's just not thinking. So. First of all, my x value can be 0. Let's make our x's 0 to 20. And because I really didn't like how that looked, I'm going to change this 340,000. Let's go, how about 349,000? It's not as, it's not, you know, should be closer. I probably should have gone a lot closer, but oof. Okay, there's my exponential. It looks like a straight line because of the zooming. Okay. Do I have an intersection point? 
Yes. So, I don't know how close you guys are to being caught up with me, but. Okay. Second calc. Number five says intersect. I'm going to hit enter. And when it says intersect, okay, it's asking me, you guys know how when we do like a zero, it asks you questions, right? It's asking me questions. First of all, it says first curve. So that's just saying that you are on the first, you know, you're picking your curve. Well, notice up here, Y1. That's my first curve. Is that one of the two curves I want to find the intersection of? Yes. So I've got that. Then I hit enter. Now it automatically defaults and it says second curve question mark and it picks Y2. You could use the arrow buttons to pick other curves if you had more curves in your calculator. Now I'm going to hit enter. A guess. You guys know what that means. That means move your cursor to the intersection point area. And then notice what it gives. You can't see because there's a glare. It just automatically, if you only have two curves entered in your calculator, two equations, it's automatically going to default. So, you got actually cool the Uh-huh. So, yeah, because I was looking for the intersection point, and my Y line is Y equals 350,000, right there is my intersection point. So, that answers the question, predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. Well, that's when the time is 11.773139. Which is going to be 11.77 what? Hours. Because the original problem was given in hours. So this intersects at t equals 11.77 hours. Yes, I will. Okay. Now, I have about four minutes left, and I want to, I need to talk about example four just a little bit because the difference between example four, <coughs> example three, it was doubling. Example four is no half liking. Okay, very sciencey here. Okay, so um, suppose the half life of a certain radioactive substance is two days, and there are four grams present initially. Find the time when there will be one gram of the substance remaining. Now, you have to pay attention. Did you guys get what you need from the previous problem? So, increment, this time instead of hours, we're talking increments of 20 days, right? So, after the first 20 days, we're going to take what? The initial, how much? Four grams. And we're going to, half-life means we're going to cut it in half. So four times a half is two. Or, keep in mind, it's four times a half to the first for the moment, which is two. What's the next increment I would look at? It's every 20 days, right? So now we're going to talk about 40 days. This time, you guys know the answer, right? Half of 2 is 1. But if you go with what I did earlier, it was the original 4 times a half times another half. Or my point is it's 4 times 1 half to the second. Now, what did the question ask? When there will be one gram. Um, did we just figure that out? Yes. We did just figure that out, that that happens after 40 days. What I want to show you real quick, though, okay, we need an equation that when we plug in 40, we get the correct answer. And if you just go four times one half to the sec, you know, to a power, it doesn't work, okay? Um, we're thinking P of T, 
4, 1 half 2, and here's the deal, guys. What does this 2 need to be equivalent to? 40 days. So 40 divided by what is 2? 20. Over here, this 1 was after 20 days. What's equivalent to 1 in the same setup? 20 divided by 20. What kind of exponent am I trying to get you guys to say? Instead of just t, t or x over 20. And I know that was very quick. I was trying to fight time there. But the idea, you need to be able to plug these numbers in. Earlier it was hours. I could just plug the hours in. When you get out of an increment of 1, you, have, you might have to change your exponents. And that's what I was looking at. Your homework is page 271 through 18. Do that for Monday. If you're someone that your grade is low, work on getting some makeup assignments into me, and please don't wait.